Hey everybody. Today we're working in the geometric distribution in R. Remember, the geometric distribution models the number of Bernoulli trials needed to obtain a single success. Depending on the source, the probability mass function is either q to the x minus 1 times p or q to the x times p. In the first case, x can be 1, 2, 3, and so on. In the second case, x can also be 0. Here, as always, p is the probability of success on an individual trial, and q is the probability of failure. In the first case, x is representing the total number of trials, including that success, and in the second, x is just counting the total number of failures before that first success. Unfortunately, there's not a single standard PMF for the geometric distribution. You'll see, dip, you'll see these two both used depending on what author you're reading. Fortunately, it's not hard to translate back and forth between the two. You just add or subtract one as the case may be. It's important to remember that R uses the second of these PMS. That is, it's taking X to be the number of failures before the first success. There are four basic functions in R for calculating in the geometric distribution. First of all, RGL. This is um, giving you simulations from the, a geometric distribution with parameter p. So for instance, r geome 8 comma 0.15 is going to generate eight random variable eight random values from this distribution. So um, the first time we tried we tried this out, we had five failures before the first success when the probability of success on an individual trial was 0.15. In the second trial we did um, we had one failure before the first success and so on. DGOM is the probability mass function. It returns the probability that you get exactly x failures before the first success. As usual in R, x can be a vector. So for instance, DGOM 0 colon 4 comma 0.15 gives you the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 failures before the first success, when the probability of success on any, indivi any individual trial is 0.15. PGOM is the cumulative distribution function. It returns the probability of getting at most x failures before the first success. And again, x can be a vector here. So PGOM 0 colon 4 comma 0.15 gives you back the probability of at most 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 failures before that first success. Again, here, the probability of success on an individual trial is 0.15. Finally, QGOM is the inverse cumulative distribution function. Specifically, it returns the smallest integer x such that PGOM x comma p is greater than or equal to k. It's computing quantiles in the specified geometric distribution. For instance, QGOM 0.385875 comma 0.15 is 2 because PGOM of 2 comma 0.15 is 0.385875. Okay, let's do an example. According to a survey, 13% of Americans don't wear their seatbelt regularly. That's going to be our P throughout this example. First of all, let's find the probability that a pollster calls exactly eight people before reaching someone who doesn't wear their seatbelt regularly. All right, let's swap over to R. I've pulled up the help file for the geometric distribution with question mark DGO. Um, you can also pull that up with question mark RGO PGO or QGO, it all works exactly the same. In this case, we want to find one individual probability, so we want to use the DGOM command. First of all, we want to feed the number of failures that we're interested in, in this case 8, and then P, the probability of success on an individual trial, so 0.13. Here the probability is just over 4%. Number two. What's the probability that the pollster calls between 6 and 10 people, including 6 or 10, before reaching someone who doesn't wear their seatbelt regularly? This is going to be a good candidate for the PGOM command, for the cumulative distribution function. First, I'm going to find the probability of getting at most 10 failures in this same distribution. So that's less than or equal to 10. However, I want to leave out the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, 3, or 5, 4, or 5 failures. So I'm going to subtract off PGOM 5, 0.13. And in this case, I get just over 21%.
Number three. A group of 200 pollsters each counts the number of calls before reaching someone who doesn't wear their seatbelt regularly. Simulate the results. Okay, so this time we're going to use the rgeom command to get some simulations in this distribution. Let's assign this to a variable. I'll call it calls. rgeom. The first argument is going to be the number of trials we want, in this case 200. And the second, as always, is going to be the probability of success on an individual trial. And we can see this vector just by typing it in, calls. You can see you have a long list of numbers here, a long vector of numbers. Let's go ahead and see the summary of it, just to see the min and the max. We can see that we got values ranging from 0 to 43. And visually, we can also see that these are all integers. Technically, we're finished with the problem here, but um, let's wrap up by having a histogram of these results. I've already loaded in the tidyverse family of packages with library parenthesis tidyverse. Um, I'm going to use the qplot function here just to get a quick and dirty histogram of these results. Um, if you're not familiar with um, qplot, I'll throw a link up top so you can get a better introduction to that. Here, we're just going to get a histogram. So we want one variable. It's calls. R will assume that we want a histogram, but um, let's get into the habit of always specifying our geom. So geom equals parenthesis, or geom equals quote histogram. Finally, I'm going to specify the number of bins here. I know that the maximum value that I got was 43. So I'm going to have a bin for every value between 0 and 43. I want 44 total bins. Um, actually, I think I also want to put some boundary color here so that I can tell the bars apart call equals I parenthesis quote. That lack of a space there was going to bother me. Let's go ahead and use black. Okay, so um, there we can see the histogram of these randomly generated results.